All right, we're good to go, guys. Sorry about that. Let's roll. Yeah, we, <laughs> that tripod is really nice. <laughs> We good? All right. In three, two. All right, three, two, one. Hey, what's up, you guys? We are hanging out here at a five-star hotel, and I walked into a day to remember. How are you guys doing today? Good. How are you? Doing all right. For people who aren't familiar with you, could I have you personally introduce yourself to our viewers and tell us you're on the band? I am Jeremy, and I sing for a day to remember. It's Josh, I play bass. Never shout Bella on YouTube would like to know. There's a zombie a pop a cop. How do you say that word? Apocalypse going on outside. Who's gonna survive? Who's gonna die? Actually, we're kind of just talking about this. Yeah, yeah. us too. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, the whole band. We'll do the whole band. Upstairs, we're kind of talking about if there was nuclear wars, same kind of thing. No, yeah. I'd say so, I'm sorry. No, we were saying if someone was coming fighting on U.S. soil, I'm staying alive. Period. Yeah. Alex might die. Alex might die. Alex will die. You agree with that? I could say Kevin probably would too. Die? Yeah, I could. I could see Neil, you know, kind of struggling. But maybe I don't know. I think me and Josh would do the best. I come from a more southern background, so. <laughs> what does that mean? I can handle myself. Okay, so you know your way around a, a horse. P plenty of things. <laughs> if you guys were porn stars, what would be your porn star name? All right, Jerk and Josh. Jerk and Josh. Yep. I like that. Didn't you have to think about it? We there was this website a long time ago. What was it called? Do you remember? No. <laughs> a website a long time ago. Xpeeps.com. It was like MySpace, but for like people who got naked. And we went on there and just like joked around, and we like started profiles like like holding our junk and stuff. And my name was Jerk and Josh. Is it still there? Pretty sure I probably still could. <laughs> what would yours be? Mine is my nickname, regardless, because it works for anything. J Jism. J Jism. That's it. All right, ladies, there you go. And last fun one here. Uh, PSN owns XBL, so a gamer wants to know, what's the day? Uh, what's the day we're supposed to remember again? None. None. I don't know. What What day does he want to remember? Yeah, it doesn't. I don't know. How about this? Have you had a day to remember today, doing this interview, being in a hotel? Uh, give me 20, 30 more minutes after this interview. I'm going to go shit my pants. All right. I'll remember that cool. forever. Yes. <laughs> Comment? Uh, I got nothing. All right. I think that's a wrap on that. Well, let's do this, guys. Uh, for people who are just getting started, what is a day to remember about? What do you mean to your fans? What's your music? How did all this come together? That's a lot of questions. Yeah. Uh, what is a day to remember? I don't know. We're just, we're just a bunch of friends that got together playing uh, the music that we wanted to play, and it didn't really make sense, but it kind of worked out for us. So, I mean, yeah, we just we just always kind of approach things like we do what we want, and we're not really worried about too much else. And here we are. Here you are. Now, your music. I mean, do you guys have a general message that you want to convey to your fans, or why do you think you guys have become so popular? Um, I'd say we just wrote what we wanted to write, kind of like what he was saying. And I don't know. I think I think that's a pretty big message, people. Just do what you want to do. Have fun what you're doing, and just be real. I don't know. Just write stuff that means something to you, and hopefully it connects to people. And if it doesn't, who cares? You did what you wanted to do. That's it. Cool, man. Um, what do you think? I just signed my first record deal, so you guys maybe five, six years ago. What do you think they would say about the gentleman here in front of me today? Gentleman, you like that? You mean us five years yeah, ago? Like in the past, that version of you, what do you think you guys would be surprised to see about here? I'd, like be time I'd be surprised. I, I think about this all the time. I actually think about a specific show, and it's weird because we were playing with Kevin's old band at that show, which is kind of weird. But I picture... I don't know, man. It's it. I never expected to be doing. We never meant for any of this shit to happen. So I mean, we really did just write a bunch of random stuff that we liked that nobody else did at the time. People talked a lot of crap to us, and we went on tour, and eventually, people caught on, and we've just kind of taken that same stance the entire time. So it's not like we never tried to do any of this. Like we don't write songs to be on the radio. The radio just plays us. I mean. Yeah. We're fortunate. That's all there is to it. That's great, man. Cool. 
Now, <clears throat> you guys attract a pretty hardcore crowd. Because of that, do you feel a certain pressure in making music that, I guess, lives up to your fans' expectations and, I guess, gives them what they're really looking for? Uh, I don't think so, really. Uh, like I said, we're just writing music that we want to write. We're always going to have heavy stuff. We're always going to have catchy stuff. So I think there's always going to be something for a day to remember fans to like. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, we're always, we're always going to be the same band, but then at the same time, I'm not really worried about anything other than what makes us happy. So I mean, if we're never going to write a record that doesn't sound like our band, so if you if you don't like something as much as something else, then I mean that's your personal opinion. But we're doing what makes us happy, and that's all that matters. Cool, man. So when did you guys know that you had made it big? Was there that show or that single or that moment where it just really sort of struck you about how big everything had gotten? Yeah, uh, we played a show the 4th of July in I think like 05 or something like that. And it was in our hometown. No one cared at all before then. And a ton of kids just knew words all of a sudden in our hometown. Went crazy, moved around, and it was sweet. Yeah, so man. that was the day I was just like, this is weird. This is what it's like to be in a band people like. What? So it was cool. It was like 100 people, too. Yeah, wow. <laughs> and now you're going out and playing in front of arenas. How does that feel? Uh, I mean, it's different. It's uh, it's completely unexpected, and we're just, you know, riding the wave. Amanders X on uh, YouTube, that's a funny name, wants to know, uh, how do you respond to fans and critics who say that you guys have sold out? You don't know me. <laughs> so how the hell do you know what I've done. I mean, we that that's so ridiculous. Kids just don't understand, man. It's it's not about who listens to your band or at least with us, it's not about getting to the next step. We're not trying to do anything. We're we're the same people, we're the same band we've always been, writing the music we want to write. And um if if that doesn't if it doesn't reach you anymore, then it doesn't reach you anymore. That that's fine. We're not trying to write songs to impress anybody. We're writing songs that make ourselves feel better you know like the, these songs are songs I write about my everyday life and they're as personal as I can possibly make them so it's not like we, we just do what we do and if and if you like it you like it you don't you don't I mean yeah so same same thing uh yeah pretty much um I don't I don't really understand that that when people say that either because if you listen to music it's always been heavy stuff and catchy stuff I feel like you mean the record sounds better like in the first song on a new record, I say my heart is filled with hate. You say we sold out, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> that got you kind of sparked, didn't it? You have no idea. You, you, <laughs> that's a can of worms. What's the weirdest thing that's ever happened to you on stage? Weirdest thing that's happened to me on stage? Def okay, weirdest thing that happened to me, um, we were playing with the Devil Wears Prada. It was our first tour in the States on Homesick. And uh, we were playing, it was our first night at Irving Plaza. We played two nights, and I was on this kick where I didn't wear underwear while we played for a good three, four months. So I was like, you know, I mean, what's what's the use? You know, I'm wearing pants, and it's just an extra article of clothing I'm going to have to wash and be annoying, so I would just play in my show pants. Well, they, they ripped during this show, a good, like, three songs in, and it ripped from the front all the way to the back. So I had to perform the entire set like with my legs together like this. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like a good 40 minutes after that that I had to. So the whole time you just sort of, what if you had to like move? You just sort of like kind of waddle around? Yeah, I would just keep my legs together and walk like this. A little tight. Yeah. Now the <laughs> Anything like that happened to you? Uh, not weird, just I guess like really embarrassing. I, how many years ago was it when we played South Are Florida? Yeah. You did a flip. This is this is probably in 2005, maybe even 2004. I'm not even sure. Long time ago. Like during this one part, like I don't know why, but it's like a story of the year, like esque, like flip thing, like a little side thing, and I'd done it like no, that was the first time I was going to do it. The first time you did it live. It's like a no-handed cartwheel, and he can do them really well. Then he went to do it for the first time, actually in front of people. Jeremy's back or something, and I fell. My bass made so much noise. I'm just like laying on the ground. Yeah, he, like, he like face planted because he hit me with his foot on the way down. And he's just like, eh. he's trying to make it sound sort of gracious, and you're like, no, he face planted. It, it really was like a face plant, and then the bass just like, oh. So uh, good times, huh? Good memories, not good times. Good memories. All, All right. Now. I'm sure you guys have had a lot of days to remember being in a band. I'm going to keep playing that up in the whole interview. But uh, Sniper TD Gaming wants to know, have you ever had a day, just in general on tour, that you wanted to forget? 
Plenty. <laughs> um, I mean, it's not on stage, it's just like a day that just sucked for you guys. Oh, yeah, plenty. Um, I, see, I, I don't know, because I'm thinking of all the horrible memories I have, and like, <laughs> so they're many. awesome like stories now. Like, yeah. I like. I, That's true. I know what you mean. I, I would say, like, the blizzard we were stuck in almost ran out of gas and froze to death. That story. sucked. But it was awesome. Uh, you almost died, and it was a good story. You would have froze to death, probably. It was a blizzard, and there was ice everywhere. We were literally two exits away from our exit to get to this show a long time ago. It was, like, one of the first ones we've done. For those who have heart, it was a Bless the Fall, Alisana, yeah, and, well. and Endwell. And we were right there at the show. We were going to get paid if we got there. But the, they, they stopped traffic because of the ice storm. And um, we were almost out of gas, so we had to shut off the van. And it turned out that the whole highway was shut down for 14 hours. So we were stuck in the middle of an ice storm with no air conditioning and uh, just sitting in a box pretty much 14 hours. You guys got to know each other real well during that 14 hours, huh? I mean, the real side of you comes out. We're going to die. I don't even remember it really. I, I think we tried to sleep as much as possible. We definitely did. Or your mind is protecting you. <laughs> for sure. And there's just other things like that. Just other like memories that you're just like, damn, that sucked. But I don't know. There... God, I totally forgot about that. Yeah. Uh, me, <laughs> us in Johnson City, Tennessee, ju jumping off cliffs, like which is like there's this secret little spot these people in Tennessee showed us, and we went there every time to jump off these cliffs, and it was so much fun. Like so much like fun. Into the water? Yeah. And I'm like yeah. uh, to a huge lake. I'm like so pumped. I'm like yes, yes. I'm gonna go, blah blah blah, and I go, and I'm standing on like the cliff to jump. Sorry, I step forward. Okay. Step forward. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like looking back. I'm like yeah, this is so much fun. We have so many friends. I turn around and Neil, our guitar player, picks up this huge dirt clot like a mud. He just like boom, throws it, hits me in the eye. I can't see. Like at all, it lodged itself behind my eye and in front of it, and I couldn't get it out. Like wow. at all, I had to go to the emergency room. They had to flush out my eye. They said that if it would have been there for like an that hour longer, I would have went blind in my eye and like stuff like that. And it's like, that was a horrible memory, but it's a good <laughs> oh, one. So why did you join a van again? <laughs> it's a good one now, though. <laughs> At the same at the same spot, the time before that, Josh was like beached on like this rock, and like there's like an overhang, and I was peeing on him from. He didn't even know what it was. And he's like, oh! And he just rolls off into the water. Oh man! So you guys mess around a little bit. Well, how about this? You, you guys, I mean, you've had some bad times, but you've had some good times. I want to join this band. So, um, how do we make this happen? You want to join the band? Yeah, I'd like to be a part of a day to remember. What do you do? Um, pretty much whatever you need. I'm a very talented person. I can play music too sometimes. I used to play drums. I played for about six months. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. So. Want to come to Australia? Yeah, let's do it. All right, there you go. You're hired. Right. You guys are paying, right? Sure. Yeah, cool. I'm playing drums in Australia. That's <laughs> All it. Right. Who's going to, I guess I better First start I practicing. Yeah. yeah. Do I need to bring my own drum set? No, we got that. Okay. We have like four days too, by the way. Okay. To get ready. That's more than enough time. So, <laughs> all right, cool. I'll see you guys in Australia. Um, you guys ever heard a funny rumor about yourself or someone in the band? A funny rumor? Yes. A good rumor. I think. Um, one today, Neil told us. A rumor? Okay, let's hear it. I don't know if I can say it though. What is it? Is there any way you can tell me without telling me? phone that's funny tell him that All right, let's do it. someone took a picture of their dick on his phone and then posted it online and now he deleted it right away he's like that's not my dick at all <laughs> so he deletes it and he's like uh, I don't know. I guess it's now a bunch of kids on the internet think that's Neil's dick. That's pretty funny. I think it's a little bit more likely that somebody just signed into his account on a computer, <laughs> or then got, got hold of it. took the photo with his phone and posted it. Maybe it really is his dick. <laughs> and got. That's what I, think I might get into that yeah, stealing you, people's phones and taking pictures. Of dick you're you're sending hell. <laughs> I do this that. career fails you, right? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> You're assuming though that he's innocent. Is it possible he's guilty? If there's well, a there's a good possibility. I almost know when I see it for sure. <laughs> I know it's a joke. I know it. You'll know when you see the picture if it's his. Absolutely. How? Yeah. How? His dick looks like a joke. Are you kidding me, man? I guess you're in a band. I've been in a band for these yeah. guys for seven years. I mean, the, after the first year, I've pretty much seen everything I need to see. All right. Yeah. No awkwardness there. Nope. All right. You lose it, man. <laughs> With what we do. There's barriers that just aren't there for us these days. Like, we're completely different people now because of it. In a good way or in a bad way? <laughs> That's yeah.
I guess we're just more comfortable with our sexuality yeah. <laughs> because of it. I don't know. All right. Well, I feel like if we could pry a little deeper there, but I'll leave it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. I kind of like to leave this open. We've done this already, but um, best story you guys can give me that you haven't told me yet. Uh, Tom, our old guitar player, we were, uh, it was like our first tour on a bus, I think, ever. We're all in the front lounge or some people are in the back lounge. And all of a sudden we just hear this like, just like breaking noise in the bunk area. I'm like, what the hell? So we open it up. Tom is just laughing his freaking ass off. He's in the top bunk. He had, had broke down, and Tom's just sitting there naked on his computer, and the bunk's broke. If someone had been under him, he literally would have probably like broke their nose or face. So. While naked. He, While on his left. Naked. <laughs> yeah, just wrapped up in his blanket. Wow. Man, you guys, it's pretty interesting tour life you guys lead, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it just sucks at the time, but I mean, we've got really funny stories because of all this stuff. It's amazing you're still alive, really. Yeah, it really is. I mean, we've had three emergency landings on planes. I mean, <laughs> all sorts of stuff. You ever think God's maybe trying to tell you something? We're cursed. <laughs> That's right. No, no, no for I'm real. Just, yeah? Oh, so I should get out of here? We are. Yeah. We really are cursed. All right, so I'm going to do this one real quick. Describe the person next to you using one word, so you can do us two first. Clothes. I, I, I'm really bad at this. He's got to start. All right, you start. I'm supposed to be doing you? Yeah. God damn it. I Already, don't... what what stands out? That judge, I'm not trying to judge you, man. I just made you. That's right. I don't want to judge you. All right, how about you do each other? Mysterious. Mysterious. <laughs> Why do you say that? Because most people can't read him. They think totally different things about him than he really is. What do people think he is? An asshole. <laughs> <laughs> and, this, and that's not true? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Mm, okay. How about this guy, what would you say? Outrageous. That's, I don't know. Outrageous? Absolutely. Now both of you together, what would you say about me? Hmm. I've, I've heard perfect. Um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> You've heard perfect. Um, From my mom. Yeah. I don't know. Do you have anything? I'm bad. This is really difficult for you. It is. Just it's say something. Just say a word. Nice. <laughs> nice. Okay. We'll go with nice. Go right. Oh, go ahead, man. This is what happens when you do an interview in a hotel lobby. All right, we are, we are done. All we have is just the fan questions we got. I picked five of the best ones. So here we go. Sammy Castro, scariest fan experience. So, let me say that again. Sammy Castro on YouTube would like to know your scariest fan experience. Him. Is, do I have one? I don't know, do you? Uh, uh, yeah, I think you got to go up one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's a lobby. Yeah, this is the, the elevator. Right there. This one, yeah. Let's go up one floor. Let me think. Capture the stuff on film if you like. All right. Scariest fan experience. Scariest fan experience. Um, uh, okay. We're playing a show in Indiana. Uh, not to us, like stalker fan, but uh, we're playing a show in Indiana, and we're playing one of our poppiest songs ever, okay. Monument, and a kid gets stabbed and thrown underneath our stage. <laughs> At three in the morning. <laughs> been thrown under the stage by like a crew or something like that. Now, is this a common occurrence at your shows? No. <laughs> so how did you guys feel? Common occurrence, but it happens. Occurrence, but yeah, there has been actually a handful of stabbings. Is there any more to this really? story? Yeah. <laughs> like what? <laughs> Stefan shows. So you guys have violent fans, apparently. I mean, there's been some crazy stuff go down at some of these shows. Yes. Anything not so much. Not so much these days, though. He's a calm down. Virginia? Club le relevant? What happened in Virginia? A gang c came up because people were making fun of them and they were going to shoot up the church. Like really old stories. That is a good one. That's Wait, a, a gang one. came into your show? It came to our show. Somebody went across the street at this, sh at, it was like this Christian venue they had, and we were doing a show across the street. Some kids went across at this Jiffy store and they like insulted like these dudes, and they came back with a bunch of their boys. They were in like a gang. They all had like machine guns and shit and they're gonna shoot up the whole church <laughs> this fucking church we're just like oh my god that's a pretty scary one it's pretty good oh wow that is a good one all right um sinonu sin sinuno 
Okay, something like that. Sai no new on YouTube. Who drinks the most on tour? Out of our band? Yeah, we'll say that. I don't just really drink a lot, but Neil, yeah. yeah. Neil, but he doesn't drink all that much. At all. Our crew is the rock stars, dog. <laughs> now, you want to know who actually drinks the most on tour? Our merch guy, Quinn. <laughs> that's, that's because he doesn't drink any other liquid. If it doesn't have alcohol in it, he doesn't drink. He doesn't really? actually eat food either. He just drinks alcohol constantly. That's all he consumes. It must be an interesting trip to the merch stand for your fans. He drinks so much that he's never drunk. So it doesn't even affect him now these when you days. you see him drunk, it's bad news, though. When he's drunk, he's really drunk. Has he ever gotten drunk while selling merch? Actually, pretty good about it. Yeah. That's good. No, he doesn't. He, he saves that for after the show. Yeah, and he goes ape shit. Olivia, what's the craziest, most bizarre thing a fan has done to get your attention? Besides stab a fan and throw him under your stage. Was, we played. Um, <laughs> we played this show. I think it was at the Chicago House of Blues or some show with a balcony. This kid jumped from the balcony. Yeah, that's Plaza. Okay, Irving Plaza. So this kid jumps from the balcony, okay. lands on stage. He was a little bit further than I guess he expected, so he kind of collapsed and just like slammed onto the floor right when he hit it. Gets up, runs to the front of the stage because all the security is like running to grab him. Runs to the front, dives, completely trips on like a monitor or something, and goes, <laughs> I'm talking like Superman, straight into the barricade. His head, he goes head first, like face first into the barricade. His head like goes backwards. It looked like his head touched his back. And then he just hits the ground, stands up, and he's just like, yeah, fuck yeah. We're like, we're all just like mortified, just staring at this kid like, I can't believe you're not dead right now. So. Did he get a t-shirt? I don't know what happened to him. They yoked him up. I never saw him again. Yeah, he did. He had to pay 20 bucks for it. Oh. <laughs> and you were the one who made that, that decision, right? I mean, on, You're man. still paying. If he broke his neck on there, who's paying for it? Not him. Us. <laughs> Shit. We were, Scare the hell out of me, kid. We were seen at a festival. We were walking to go get catering. I'll always remember this. Some kid's like, hey, like screaming at us. His like hand is broken in like a wrap. And he's like, you did this to me. <laughs> we're just like, oh my God. I'm sorry. <laughs> Did you ever get an explanation for that? Uh, I'm sure he just broke his hand at our set. He was cool. about it too. Yeah. He's like, oh, so he wasn't like mad. No, like, come no, fix we this. thought he was mad. Yeah. And then he was like, I fucking love you, man. I was like, all right. Glad you feel that way. You have such dedicated fans. You know that? We really do. That's the truth. That's the truth. And I think this is the last one here. Nosebleed BC uh, would like to know. I don't know if this is true. So confirm or deny or stay silent. Why do you throw bags full of crap at each other? Is this a true story? It's happened once. Yeah. Just dropped a bag of crap on someone. Who got dropped on me? Didn't throw it. Oh, okay. Why, why did you do that though? Neil's feces were in a bag because he couldn't hold it and he had uh -huh. to shit in the bus. And when he left, he tripped and it spilled on me. And then I ran down the streets of Las Vegas naked throwing up. <laughs> It's all documented. You can find it on YouTube. <laughs> so wait, wait. So you were you were naked when this happened? No. You're strip naked. <laughs> because of shit on my pants. Okay, so he's he's crying. Stripped naked, vomits, and runs <laughs> down the road naked in Vegas. You know, I have to say, I've done like a hundred interviews, and you guys have more stories <laughs> about being naked. About being naked and arms being broken off and. Okay. Die, death, there, it's going blind. There's so many more. Like, I mean, this is nothing. You know, this isn't the tip of the iceberg, man. I changed my mind. I don't want to be in a day to remember. We need to write books. That's what we need to do. Freaking book. No, but I, I really don't want to be in this band. I'm kind of scared. Not gonna lie. No. I'm just. I'm like. You know how you said you're amazed that guy wasn't dead. I'm amazed you guys are still here. That's the truth. I'm gonna give you a little standing ovation for making it this far. Well, I think that's about it. Um, oh yes, Live Oak Seven Eight Two. What is your soul animal? <laughs> I got this question. I had to put it in. Mine, mine would be the Florida panther. <laughs> the Florida panther? Yes. Why? No reason. <laughs> Can you just see me in the woods on a panther's back? We're supposed to be the panther, not <laughs> We're becoming one. <laughs> I know Alex's soul animal. Yes. A monkey. 
because he looks like Diddy Kong. <laughs> DNA is mixed with the chimp. What would be your soul animal? Josh has got to answer this. You can't answer your own soul okay. animal. What would be his soul animal? A rock. That's not an animal. Doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. My animal is a rock. <laughs> a pet rock. All right. You can carry around with him. A and pet rock. <laughs> People really have those. Really well, you've got one right here. Yes. <laughs> there we go. All right. What do you think? What's my yours? What would be my soul? Animal? I can't do my own. I, we've done ours. No. All right. All right. So I get to do yours. Just think of something. Uh. Maybe, maybe funny. I think a seahorse. That's what I think of when I look at you. Seahorse. <laughs> when you look at me, you think of a seahorse. Yeah, majestic. Majestic. Isn't that an eagle? No. Majestic. Majestic. Majestic? <laughs> you asked it, homie. <laughs> I would like to personally thank Live Oak 782 for that question. Soul. <laughs> the rock, the seahorse, and the Florida panther. Keep it together, guys. Uh, is that, yeah, that's what we are. <laughs> what a weird mix, huh? Not just to put us in a cage together. God knows <laughs> what will happen. All right. Um, new music you'd like to talk about? <laughs> I don't know what's happening anymore. Um, <laughs> new music, a record just came out. You want you yeah. want more shit? Congratulations. <laughs> Damn. Easy, no, this is your chance to to sell your oh. your Panther stuff. Go buy our new record. What separates me from you? And tell us how much we sold out. Yes. Please. Rocks can't sell out. Thanks. He's got the right idea. <laughs> oh my god, I think I'm gonna die. You ever like laugh so hard that you feel like you just like ran 14 miles? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I get sore I laugh so much. <gasps> Alright. <laughs> I'm like crying. He's crying. All right, a day to remember, interview, good times, guys. Thank good you. luck tonight. Check out their music. They didn't sell out, trust me. All right, we'll see you guys later. Oh, can I just say that was awesome? Don't worry, there's plenty more where that came from. Come with me behind the scenes, backstage, and onto the tour bus to meet your favorite stars. We are backstage with Slipknot. I am here with my good friend, the American Idol, Chris Allen. I'll ask questions you've never heard before and show you the answers you won't find anywhere else. You said you're a Justin Timberlake fan. No. No? No. Maybe that wasn't you? Oh my god, I shouldn't have smoked all that weed. What do you like about Katy Perry? Everything. Happy so birthday! Day, dear bra, ha, 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 ha. Huge meaning or self defining sort of thing. I think we just lost one of our interviews. Rate, comment, and subscribe for new videos every week. Reporting for YouTube, I'm Brian O'Dell. Brian Stars! Brian Stars! I'm the reason you're, you go on tour. You're the reason I'm here, baby.